Hello everyone! I am so happy to see you again. I am Anna Pomazanova, Rossmore Excursion Desk Coordinator. Welcome to a round the world travel presentation. Today I invite you to go to Asia and visit an exotic country, Thailand. Located in the center of mainland South Asia, Thailand is steeped in rich tradition and spirituality that is heavily influenced by the ethnic groups from India, Cambodia, China, and Southeast Asia. The ancestors of Thai people originally lived in southwest China and northern Vietnam and migrated to the main part of Southeast Asia over many centuries. They settled along river valleys, where they formed small settlements and engaged in farming, fishing, and gathering of forest products. By the 11th century, Thai had moved into the area of what is now Thailand, and by the middle of the following century, they had formed principalities there. As the Thai migrated, they came in contact with Mon and Khmer people, who established powerful kingdoms in the region. These kingdoms came into contact with other South Asian people and absorbed their religious, political, and cultural ideas that later influenced the development of Thailand's culture and national identity. By the beginning of the 13th century, Theravada, a dynamic new form of Buddhism, had entered mainland Southeast Asia from Sri Lanka. Theravada Buddhism was carried by monks not only to areas under Mon and Khmer rule, but also to the new Thai principalities that were beginning to emerge. In the 13th century, several small states in Thailand, in the Mekong River Valley, united to form a kingdom called Sukhothai. It is regarded as the first Thai kingdom. However, it did not last long and in the end of the 14th century was succeeded by the kingdom of Ayutthaya. Ayutthaya, situated in the rich rice plains of the Chao Phraya River Basin, about 55 miles north of present-day Bangkok, lasted more than 400 years. During this period, the Thai consolidated their position as the leading power in what is now central and north-central Thailand as well as throughout much of its southern peninsula region. Since many of Ayutthaya's neighbors called the country Siam, or a name similar to it, the Thai or Ayutthaya came to be known as the Siamese. Wars against neighboring powers continued throughout the Ayutthayan period. When the Siamese conquered Angkor, the capital city of Khmer, the Ayutthaya's rulers adopted many of the Hindu ideas and practices that had been followed by the Khmer, including the concept of the ruler as God, at the same time a formal and highly complex hierarchical unit system was designed that determined the rank of a person within society. At the bottom of the scale, a slave was worth five units. Free men were ranked at 25 and above, and the heir apparent to the throne was assigned no fewer than 100,000 units. Ayutthaya in the 17th century, according to European visitors, was one of the wealthiest and most cosmopolitan cities in the world. Although it lay inland, it was easily accessible to ocean-going vessels traveling up 
the Chao Praia River and it became a thriving international trade center. It was during this period that European traders and travelers started coming to Siam. The Portuguese reached Siam in 1511. They were followed in the 17th century by Dutch, English, Spanish, and French traders and missionaries. Ayutthayan kings permitted Chinese, Indian, Persian, and European traders to establish settlements, employed Japanese warriors, and allowed Western missionaries to preach within Ayutthayan domains. In addition, the rulers of Ayutthaya sent missions to the Chinese imperial court, established Buddhist missions in Sri Lanka, and sent emissaries as far as Europe. Theravada Buddhism took deep roots throughout Siam during Ayutthayan times alongside the Brahmanism that already characterized court rituals and the religious practices that pervaded all levels of society. The Buddhist establishments, Sangha, was the focal point for village life, providing young males with an education and growth opportunities. The Europeans, French in particular, tried hard to convert Buddhist Siamese to Christianity. As a result, in 1688, the Siamese expelled the French from Ayutthaya and closed their doors to the West for the next 150 years. In 1767, the Burmese invaded Ayutthaya and captured it. The king and members of the royal family, along with thousands of captives, were deported to the Burmese kingdom. All Ayutthayan records were burned and works of art destroyed. A new era in Thai history began with the rise to power of Thaksin, a military commander of great skill and charismatic personality. He united the Thai, expelled the Burmans, and made himself king of Siam. In 1769, Taksin established his new capital at Tanburi, across the river from present-day Bangkok. Capitalizing on the trade relations that Siam had already developed with China, Taksin encouraged Chinese merchants and craftsmen to take advantage of the economic opportunities offered by the site of his new capital. Taksin not only recovered the territories that had formerly been part of the Ayutthayan Empire, but also conquered much of the Laos and other parts of Southeast Asia. Today, Taksin is known as Taksin the Great by virtue of his heroic deeds for the homeland. However, within a few years, Taksin showed signs of serious mental instability, and in 1782 he was overthrown and put to death. He was succeeded by his former military commander, Chakri. He was later given the title of Rama I and was the first king of the Chakri dynasty, which has held power to this day. In 1782, Chakri established a new capital in Bangkok. He also commissioned the building of the Grand Palace, now one of Bangkok's most popular tourist attractions. His heirs did what they could to modernize the country and keep it going forward. They built trade relations with important countries such as France, England, and tried to preserve the country's independence. Until this very day, the Thai pride themselves on always having maintained their independence. 
However, in 1893, Rama V was forced to cede Laos to France. He also ceded Cambodia to France in 1907, and in 1909 he was forced to cede territory in Malaya to Britain. In the early decades of the 20th century, Thailand's political system, armed forces, and economy underwent drastic changes. Many wealthy CMEs studied overseas and were deeply dissatisfied with the tight political control that ruling family held over the country. In 1932, a bloodless coup ended the monarchy and inaugurated Thailand's constitutional era. A state council and national assembly were established under the new government. In 1939, the country's name was changed from Siam to Thailand. However, the progress towards a stable democratic political system has been erratic. Politics has been dominated by rivals of powerful generals which have imposed prolonged periods of martial law on the country. In the 1980s, the country changed its course towards democracy and in 2001, for the first time, the government was elected by the people. Since then, Thailand underwent amazing economic growth. It was transformed from a poor agricultural country to a newly industrialized one. Today, Thailand's economy is growing steadily and the tourism is booming. Thailand is an amazing destination that has a lot to offer to travelers, whether you stay in just for a week or are taking a long-term exploration of the country. Thailand comprises busting modern cities crowded with motorbikes and tuk-tuks, Buddhist temples tended by orange-robed monks, hill tribes selling handicrafts, lush landscapes dotted with traditional farming villages, ancient ruins and stunning coastline peppered with gorgeous beaches and blue lagoons. The capital, Bangkok, is by far the largest city in the country. The combination of modernization and civilization is the biggest charm of this city. Bangkok is filled with countless amazing things to do. Every visitor to Bangkok should see the magnificent buildings of the Grand Palace, former residence for Thai kings. Today, the palace is used for hosting royal ceremonies and welcoming the king's guests, state guests, and other foreign dignitaries. The impressive interior of the palace is still used for important ceremonies such as coronations and also features the antique throne which was used prior to the western one currently in use. Much of the palace is built in traditional Thai architecture, while other areas are inspired by the European Renaissance era and sometimes you will see a combination of both. The ornate decorations and intricate details pay tribute to the craftsmanship and creativity of the Thai people. There are over 100 buildings on the grounds. Not all of them are open to the public. The sacred Wat Prakeu, or the Temple of the Emerald Buddha, remains one of the main reasons visitors flock to the Grand Palace. The temple is surrounded by walls more than one mile long, giving an overwhelming first impression. Inside, there is a unique complex of ornate buildings, Buddhist temples, statues, and towers. The central building is the main hall where the Emerald Buddha is adorned. 
Pay attention to beautiful decorations. Established in 1859, the Bangkok National Museum showcases the Thailand history, archaeology, ethnology, and art. The museum was opened by King Rama V to show off all the gifts that his father had given to him. There are many interesting things to see in the museum, such as weapons, precious stones, puppets, clothing and textile, and con masks. The Wat Po Temple is home to the reclining Buddha, which stands at 50 feet tall and 150 feet long. The feet alone are measured at over 16 feet. The whole statue is covered in gold leaf and looks incredible when you get up close. Inside the temple, there are 108 bowls for 108 positive actions that Buddha completed. On the way to the temple, you can buy coins to put in the bowls. The temple of Wat Mahatat was originally built to house a relic of the Buddha. Founded in the 18th century, it is one of the oldest shrines in Bangkok. It has been considerably altered over the years, most notably by the young prince Mon Kut, who would later become King Rama IV of Thailand. Today, the temple is the headquarters of the Mahanikai school of Buddhism, Thailand's largest monastic order. The temple offers classes in meditation. Some programs are even taught in English. The temple is tucked away on the grounds surrounded by classrooms and other office buildings. The galleries surrounding the temple's courtyard are lined with a large number of tall Buddha images on very ornately decorated pedestals. Next to the temple, vendors gather every Sunday for Bangkok's largest amulet market, where they peddle religious amulets, talismans, charms, and traditional medicine. The amulets have different purposes, to restore health, to bring great wealth, or to keep enemies away, for example. Chao Phraya River, flowing through Bangkok, is the lifeblood of the city. Even today, thousands of people go to work using one of the many ferries that go up and down. Taking a boat trip is a fascinating experience as you will see modern high-rise condominiums and fancy hotels, historic landmarks, as well as wooden shacks and children playing in the water. Feel free to get on and off at any of the stops that ferries make to further explore the city. The brand new King Power Mehana Khan Tower in downtown Bangkok is Thailand's tallest building at more than 1,000 feet high. Many of its 78 floors are primed for shopping and dining. An observation deck at the top offers spectacular views of the city. By the way, shopping in Bangkok is sensational, with numerous shopping malls and busting markets, including the not-to-be-missed floating markets. With scores of street vendors and variety of restaurants for every budget and taste, Bangkok offers a fantastic dining experience. After you spend a couple of days in Bangkok, travel north to visit the Khao Yai National Park, the third largest park in Thailand. Despite the high elevation, 
The park's landscape is a diverse mix of evergreen rainforests and grasslands. The abundance of wildlife is one of the main reasons for visiting Khao Yai National Park. Peak-tailed macaques, sambar deer, freshwater crocodiles, and Asian black bears are just a few creatures that can be spotted wandering through the park. It is also one of the few places in Thailand where you can regularly see bigger mammals like elephants and tigers in the wild. Khao Yai National Park has several waterfalls hidden inside the tree-lined forests. At 260 feet tall, powerful Hei Narok is the largest waterfall in the park and a must-visit. Although not as high, the picturesque Hei Suat waterfall was the setting for the waterfall jump scene in the movie The Beach. More north, a small city of Sukhothai is a popular tourist destination due to the nearby ruins of an ancient city by the same name. Sukhothai was the first capital of Thailand, or Siam at that time. Sukhothai Historic Park is a place to see many temples, palaces, and monuments from that era. The park is divided into multiple zones, with each featuring several excavated temples, Buddha figures, and other monuments with impressive stucco reliefs. Wat Mahatat is considered to be the most impressive temple. In the middle of the park is Wat Sai Cham Pavilion, which houses a massive 50-foot tall sitting Buddha. The on-site museum is a great place to learn more about the park's history, as it contains different artifacts and objects found in the area. Our next stop is the Elephant Nature Park, located 37 miles from the city of Chiang Mai. This rehabilitation center is home to more than 200 elephants rescued from the tourism and logging industries since its inception in the 1990s. Here you can get up close to elephants without riding them or seeing them perform. Instead, you can help caring for elephants through a variety of experiences from bathing and feeding elephants to following them on jungle tracks. The sanctuary offers overnight rustic accommodations for those willing to stay. Now it's time to explore the beautiful coast of Thailand. Pattaya is one of the most popular vacation spots in Thailand with many beautiful resorts to choose from. The city is filled with tourist attractions providing a variety of experiences. Pattaya Old Town features a unique blend of Chinese and Portuguese architecture. The Siam Niramit show presents scenes from Thai folklore and the country's long past. In Pattaya, you can relax on the beach or have fun at one of the water parks. Next, devote some time exploring the islands of Thailand. All located in close proximity, the islands are famous for their wonderful beaches, affordable food and accommodation, laid-back vibe, and excellent activities. Located in southern Thailand, Phuket is the country's largest island, connected to the mainland by two bridges. Of Phuket's many attractions, 
The beaches are the main draw with their white sand, blue lagoons, and abundance of water sports. Phuket is also a place for ultimate relaxation and pampering with its numerous options that range from massage tents right on the beach to world-class spas in breathtaking settings. Fun and adventure is to be found everywhere from aquariums and seashell museums to busting streets of downtown. With a regular ferry service provided by several companies from Phuket, Ka Pi Pi is the natural next stop on your island hop and adventure. It is often said to be among one of the most beautiful islands in the world. Tackle the many steps up to the viewpoint and you will be rewarded with glorious views of twin curved bays adorned by jungle and mountains. PP is known for excellent scuba diving. Boat tour will take you to several small islands nearby, including the famous James Bond Island, jutting straight out of the water. It was used in the 1974 film The Man with the Golden Gun. An important part of your tour of Thailand, Thai cuisine is built around the four fundamental flavors – spicy, sweet, salty, and sour. Thai dishes rely on fresh local ingredients like seafood, lemongrass, coconut milk, tamarind, lime, basil, turmeric, and garlic. Thai cuisine has a reputation all over the world for being the most delicious and flavorful meal that you will ever have. Thailand has three official seasons – hot, cool, and wet. The hot season runs from April through June, with April and May being the hottest months of the year. The wet monsoon season runs from July through October and usually is accompanied by heavy rain. The best time to visit Thailand is during the cool and dry season between November and early April when temperatures are mild. However, the climate varies greatly throughout the country and there are parts that you can visit all year long. I really hope you enjoyed this presentation. Often referred to as the land of smiles, Thailand is always warm and welcoming, despite of receiving millions of tourists all year round. I will see you next Wednesday for another Around the World travel presentation. For now, please stay safe and healthy. Goodbye!